So that's the, that's the thing we want to get across, is we've done this thing together. And that's what tonight is about, is us coming together to say, what have we learned? How can we celebrate? And then the question we really want to ask is, so what's next? What's the next thing we do together? Because we're not done. Uh, Dr. Martin, I, what, I, I know you've got, you've got other things to do, and, I, and you've got, but thank you for being here tonight. Can you give us some thoughts? How, how has this been for you? Uh, maybe you can lead with this, this kind of question that we'll ask everybody else in a minute. How did it go? How did we do? And, and what did we learn? Yeah, it's hard to uh, know everything that we've learned. I think you'd have to talk to the individuals uh, that have interacted and intersected with, with the 1073 community. But first of all, I'd si I simply want to say thank you to the members of 1073 for joining us here on the campus. You've enriched our lives, you've enriched our understanding about uh, the complexities of homelessness and the various ways that we can engage. Owen is right, we don't want this conversation for this campus to end here. It certainly won't end on Saturday when you move to your next location in Shoreline. But we, we want to discover ways individually and corporately that we can work together, as we said on the video. This is a topic and an issue that we're going to keep in front of our community. We're going to find ways to engage. Our vision statement at the university, if you've heard it the last few months, is engage the culture and change the world. And so we can't engage unless we understand, and you have helped us bring an understanding and awareness and that education to this community. Now it's our responsibility to now act and to move forward in the ways that Christ has called and gifted us to do in a variety of ways. So thank you for coming and being a part of our community. I know Tom's already asked when we're coming back, <laughs> and so we'll, we'll get that in the, in the rotation. But you have enriched our lives and uh, you've enriched my life. Because I've had the opportunity to be in conversation with you, particularly at the dinners on Thursday night. And so there is a lot, I'm sure, Owen, as we would go through and as we continue our conversations past this and work through our strategic plan. And I know you and Nikki are going to help us lead some conversations across campus to pull out and draw out all the things that this campus and this community and individuals have learned. And I'm looking forward to taking that, putting that together, and then discovering ways in which we can move forward and act and, and address and continue to assist uh, your community and then others in our community. So thank you so much. God bless you. <laughs> so now we get to that spot that I told you was coming. I've got a microphone here and I would love to hand it to you. And then I would love to hear you talk about what this time together has meant to you. Students, what have you learned? Or what ways have you been engaged? What are some of the things that uh, that being neighbors with 1073 has taught you? In a minute, then then after that section, then we'll hear from 1073 folks to to tell us what's that been like on your side. Um, and, and the big conversation is what have we learned? How can we do this again well together? Um, so the mic is on. Um, anybody want to want to volunteer? What what did you learn? How did it go? Um, come on, this this is your time. Go ahead, Dan. Here, we'll bring this to you. How about that? Yeah, you just pass that mic around. That's true. Okay. Okay, so my name's Kaylin. I'm a dietetic student, and I'm working with Kat and Lindsay, um, and we're part of the Tent City Thursday night dinners. So um, through this, I thought I was just cooking the, you know, make meals for um, some great homeless folks that I've gotten to meet over the course of the months, but. It's crazy how much you learn just by sitting down and talking with participants. And so um, I've been able to just understand what they go through. Not understand. I've been aware of what they go through. And um, they've told me a lot of their life stories, their struggles. And so with this knowledge, it's great that I can hope to apply that and learn how to help them in the future. Um, I was brought to light of some information about um, certain laws that are being passed that are really unfair for the homeless community. So just learning how I can use my vote to help them, um, knowing what they need nutritionally. Uh, a lot of people are suffering from diabetes, so just knowing how I can use my own major to help their nutritional status has been great. And um, the biggest part from this is they just love talking to us, um, knowing that they're seen and that they're heard because a lot of times they don't feel that way when they step out into the community. 
So I think as a, a student and as um, the younger generation, we should just encourage our neighbors to engage in conversation and let them know that they're human because it's unfortunate that they feel less than that and that that's because we aren't looking at them. So um, that's probably the biggest takeaway that I've gained from this experience. So thank you, everybody, for that. Hi, I'm John. Um, thank you, Tennessee City Three residents, for teaching me that hospitality doesn't take a house. Um, yeah, to be able to engage individually meant a lot. Um, and yeah, up here, like all those social constructs and stuff, so many stereotypes are broken. You've taught me a lot. So I'm kind of just going to wing it. Um, first off, uh, Dr. Smith here, I don't know if she's in here. Yes. For me, even before 1073, it really all began with her class, Homelessness in America. And, um, you know, it's easy to say you do care about people, but being in the midst of someone that instills um, a, an intense passion to care about someone, not because of the category of that, oh, this person is homeless, it's more care about this person because this person is a person, it's a human being. Um, and that has trickled out of her classroom into seeing the residents of 10 City 3 and being around them and, you know, just, you know, walking next to them and say, hey, how are you, you know, you know, how's your day going? I think um, just treating someone in the midst of, um, as you would treat another person, as you would treat a friend or just someone passing by, asking them about how their day is going or just carrying a conversation. Um, brings um, a sense that you care about someone as a person. Um, and I think in having 10 City 3 here, I, I hope that we all carry this outside of the school and not just the, in, in the midst of that, yeah, hey, we were able to do something here. You know, when we go out Friday, as some of the students will, I hope that when we see um, people on the street that we engage them, you know, or if they come up to us that we're, we're more conscious and polite about their trials and tribulations or that they're just a human being like us. Uh, I guess that's what I want to say though. I'm Carla, I am a transfer student. I transferred here this year. Knowing that you guys hosted 10 City before was actually the final reason that I decided to come to this school. I thought it was one of the most heartwarming things I'd ever heard. So I was super excited that you guys were all coming this winter. And so I was, it was unfortunate that I couldn't help you move in because so I was having surgery. So that was a little bit of a bummer, but I promised myself that I'd be involved from then on. And I just honestly want to thank you guys for your vulnerability and just talking with us and being so easy to share your stories and trusting us with that because it really taught me that we really do just need to be more open as a society. And as you we were actually just saying, when I go out now, I really try to carry that out into the community and talk with people and engage with them. And people have been so like, oh, thank you for even just like saying hi. And I'm like, oh, of course. And so I'm trying to spread that to my other friends who don't go to SPU and just in the Seattle area and just trying to help you guys get into with the laws. I know I've talked to a few people about those and that too. You guys have just given us so much and like such a rich experience and I honestly like can't thank all of you enough. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I heard you were hosting 10 City so I decided to come to SPU. Thanks guys. But keep up the good work. So what else? What are the ways you've engaged? How, how has this gone for you? What have you learned? These are good stories. Daniel. There we go. There's another one over there. I see that. I see the hand. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think I've, I mean, I've learned a lot. Too much to say in two minutes or whatever. Um, but I think one of the biggest ways that I've, uh, I don't know, uh, just the advocacy that I've seen um, going to UW, I don't even know what it was, the health equity circle thing, um, and then 
just going there expecting just random people to be talking about it, but then to see um, Roger and I'm sorry, I forgot your name, you Tony, you're there too, and Rhonda was there. Um, just to see them there and and just I don't know, I'm learning so much from them about advocacy and really speaking out against structural inequalities that we have in our society and ways to um, support each other. And yeah, and I think one of the one big impact for me is just um, I don't know, thank you guys for like like she just said, thank you guys for being vulnerable with us and thank you for discussing with us and Roger for educating me and schooling me on <laughs> issues around this sort of thing. And I don't know, it's just um, riding back on the bus with you guys the other day after the um, Hall Council or City Council thing, I was just, it was just so weird to, I guess, have myself being going back to a warm home and things like that. And you guys going to a tent and that, that was just because I think in our society we're kind of taught to dehumanize or to disrespect or think of people that maybe live in tents or not don't live in homes as something less or worse and from interacting and from what I've learned is that you know I respect I respect you guys I respect you more than I thought like I guess I would you know in a way like I've learned a lot from you guys and so that was a weird disconnect for me to um, see that and so I just I've learned a lot about our society and I want to make it so that we can have houses for everyone or the opportunity to have houses for everyone. Hi, um, my name is Daniel and I'm just the guy that likes to play games on Thursday nights. Um, and my real hope for uh, Thursday night game nights was just to provide an opportunity really for an high school. Um, something to do together between students of uh, SVU and Intensity 3. Um, and so for me, uh, I really love the fact that when you play a game, um, part of the time you're talking, but part of the time you're not. You know, you're just focusing on the cards, and it can really just provide a break. Um, so I really enjoyed seeing uh, faces like Christopher and Jeff and Carrie um, week after week. And just for a chance to, to take a break um, and focus on something as simple as a game, and I hope you guys had an opportunity to have a little bit of fun, or at least put a little smile on your face while you're here. Other folks, other thoughts? Could have been this mic. I have the microphone. Hi, my name is Heather. Um, I had the opportunity to be a student liaison slash coordinator for lots of PC3 this year. Thanks. Um, and I just been really blessed with the opportunities I've had like a bigger picture of what was going on than I feel like a lot of students got to see. Like I got to work with some of the research students. I got to I didn't do research. I wish I did. Um, and I got to help Daniel you know, make his game night happen. I got to help make the Thursday night dinners happen and as well as like the your guys' weekly meetings and I really appreciate how much you guys supported me. I was really nervous and <laughs> didn't want to, I don't know, I was just really nervous. And you guys were really supportive. And like by you guys being vulnerable, it helped me be able to share and be able to speak up more. And I would have never thought I would be speaking at a city council meeting. And now it's on video on the internet. So um, yeah, thank you guys so much. And, and I just feel really blessed to have gotten to know you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jeff. I'm a Tent City 3 resident, and you did restrict us to students, so I'm here. Um, I, I don't like passport I learned. Okay? I came in here with a misconception. You know, I thought college students were all party animals. I was going to see pianos thrown out of windows, hear loud ruckus all night, every night. And like many of you, my Experience has taught me I came in here with the wrong idea, wrong perception. And I hope you picked that up as well. Okay, just because we have a reputation doesn't mean that's who we are. 
Just because college students have a reputation, that doesn't mean who you are. You know, I found people not only who went to my same high school, shared the same interests, you know, and there was no <laughs> barrier between that whatsoever. We were people talking. Conversations about homelessness or, you know, rowdiness did not become part of our conversation. We, I got along wonderful with all of these students. Uh, my time here, I will never forget. And thank you for letting me speak on that. Anyone else want to want to chime in before we sort of segue to our next little bit here? I mean, I think if you, so, if we were to catch up now, and Nikki, I'm, I'm looking at you too. If we, you've got the closing thoughts on this, right? I want to make sure we we. I'm the guy with the mic, but Nikki Amarante just helped me run this boat, so that's important. Um, but I think if you were to if you were to summarize what we just said, um, we talked about boy, it was neat that SPU offered up its loop space, right? That was important. But the next thing that almost everybody talked about was not that it was nice that we put people in the loop, but the things that happened after that were the important piece for the university. Relationships were formed, stereotypes were broken down. People learned how to advocate by learning from people who do that well, right? Those are the things that we're gonna take away and say this is what this produced as far as learning outcomes for SPU students. And we hope we've done that well. I, I think maybe now, we'll turn this over to, to folks from TC3. You, you've prepared some thoughts on, on how this went. And will you, as you come, will you tell us how it went? And my question for you is, so what should we be doing next? What's the next thing? You can answer one. So I'm Roger Franz. I'm the camp advisor for 10 City 3. We have prepared some thoughts. We divided up into a few pieces, so there's four of us. So first off, how it went. I think it went great. So, you know, when we came in here about, what, two months ago, I said, you know, we're just people. Come over and talk to us. So how many of you did? Great. And we're just people, right? Okay. Everyone learned that. We're just people. Our houses are made of cloth and fabric, but we're just people. So I think you all learned, and we learned that students aren't necessarily party animals. Although, you know, the guys Wednesday night at 10 p.m., rowdy coming through, and it's not a big deal, but there, there, are, there is noise on this campus every few nights. There is, it doesn't last till midnight, but there is noise. But I think the campus enjoyed being here. We really have, for a lot of reasons. It wasn't just the space, although the space was very nice. We were up front right by 3rd Avenue where everyone can see that we're there. And so I don't know if you all know, one of the reasons Tension 3 exists is advocacy. Hmm. We're constantly there reminding people that homelessness is real. And every one of you now knows that, not just up here, but in here where it really counts. Right? So I think part of the reason we like to come to universities is because we get to shape the lives of 3,500 people in seeing this. And I think that's what we accomplished. And we thank you all for the opportunity. And I think Jeff has. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Jeff Roderick, and I have been given the very special honor of thanking this you for again hosting Tent City 3. As it turned out, we could not express our gratitude enough in one piece of paper. In fact, we barely did it on six, okay? <laughs> This is for your school, thank you. Oh, and you. Um, it made me very happy to see how many of you students and faculty came through and visited Tent City, took a tour, and see what we're about. 
Remember, discrimination is a hereditary disease. You pass it on to your children, but it can end. Please be the difference. Thank you. No, I have a lot. <laughs> I'm, my name is Christopher Parker. I'm known as a happy resident of Institute 3. Uh, I've been inside Institute Walls for about five weeks now. It's been an experience that my life will not soon forget. And I'm, I'm trying not to shed the first tear here, so work with me. Out of all the experiences in my life, this has been one of, the, one of the best ones. I am sorry to say that it has taken houselessness to bring us together, but I am glad we are together. I'm already missing some of the spaces and the smiles I've come to know in the past five weeks. Family, a big family, tell me I never knew I had. I have to remember, and you, we were just a bus ride away. Uh, I see big hopes with Tent City 3 and you, uh, you folks, SPU. Uh, I see the chance of y'all joining us and taking this cancer into the community where it can be used for the benefit of those who first gave to us. Uh, we have an upcoming meeting, meeting down there with the council meeting again in two weeks. We ask for y'all's support to help keep this alive and, and growing of goodness. Uh, last night during the poetry event, I wrote one. I'm always doing something like this. Her words are always coming out of me. Uh, I was asked to recite this one tonight. So bear with me as in the I can get it in the best of me. I searched my widening path for an eraser for my life's mistakes. As I started my search, I found out real soon it was more of a search for something to erase. What could I erase? So many moments make up all of me. If I had had a chance to make, take something away, how different of me would I be? Would I like me a little more or a little less? Or be it something that I might miss? Be it may I gave you the eraser. What change would you try? Would you create love? Or would you give me a black eye? It seems to be the best eraser for life's mistakes today is the never ending morning of tomorrow. Thank you for all your love. Tony, which I think not so much of everyone, but on a more personal, I was here the last time we were here at SPU, and what I kept telling all the new campers and that stuff, right, is they haven't seen anything yet, because when we got here on this campus, you guys were pretty much on Christmas, on break, and it was tours after tours after tours. It's like, never, you know, we walk in the door. You get that stereotype, you know, your parents say, you know, in, I don't know if you're in from hometowns where, you know, you don't go across the train tracks. You know, here, those, that's not going around. It's the sidewalk that we're looking at. You know, it's, you know um, the biggest thing is what you guys can do to continue the relationships you guys made here. Yeah, we're only busway right away. My grandma always said, the family is not the one that you are born into, it's the one that makes you make, you make up around you. Because they're not afraid to tell on you. Okay. So the next big thing is, you know, SPU has hosted us twice. You guys have set the precedent, all right? What do we need to do, or what can we do to get these other universities also interested? You know, I mean, you guys are setting a standard. I mean, you got uh, University of Washington, you're seriously talking about it. Uh, Seattle University hosted us once, but they're still trying to figure out the legislative system, how to host us in. But they're not only just the, those two, there's lots of others, community colleges, um, even schools. 
I mean, we had a bunch of uh, school kids come through our camp. Um, we had uh, <coughs> fathers say, you know, for the uh, urban plunge and that stuff, they can come here all the time, anytime they want. You know, this is the thing about our camp. We're family. You can come and go as you please. But you know, once we leave here, it shouldn't end there. What's going to happen next? Here you go, Owen. Thanks. I, this is helpful. Things I heard in that. I mean, you heard them too, so I'll summarize because I'm holding the mic. But um, things I, I heard in that. Let's keep in touch. Let's keep working together. Let's make this. Let's let's push this down the track to, to solve the problem that we're all working on now that we know about that we know how to do this. So this is important. One other thing that has been interesting. This is the segue into the art and um, poetry piece that uh, that uh, Christopher opened us up in. But um, there, there's been some fun artwork happening here. I don't know if you've if you made a tour through Tent City Three, you might have met Walter Hudson. Walter, do you want to come on up and we'll we'll explain some of this. Um, So, uh, so Walter, can you, can you quickly? Now, there is a story that goes deep in this thing, but but can you, in, in a minute or two, tell us about you, you've been working on this painting, and tell us what what it means and where it goes and all that kind of stuff. Do you have thoughts? Well, Mr. Bird is flying from the Eagle Walk Gallery. It's an animation of topography, uh, cartoon. We can't hear. It's an animation of of uh, topography. Um, each character has a pseudonym, and the language is mostly esoteric, so it's difficult to explain, but the character Lynchburg is the bottom, Lynchburg, the peak, Clavis, Thomas, Moonus, uh, us the suffix, and Lynch is a prefix to create a nomenclature for nouns, and so anytime you have a noun like wind, you get a name, Windus, which has a raw shield also, I found. Uh, flowers, uh, birds, bugs, <laughs> anything you can think of, you can put us on the end of a noun to get an animated name. There you go. Thank you. And, and so, so this this painting is is staying here. Is that, is that right? Will, will this will this painting stay here in this view? Is that? Oh yeah. I'm, I'm going to leave that with the school. And, And I think there are two things that should happen with this. We'll walk by and say, man, that is a great piece of art. And man, we know the person who painted it. And it'll remind us of this winter when we say, you know, while this piece of art was created here, we got to meet some folks who changed our view of the world. That's important. So Walter, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, as well said, there's a lot of stories here. And so um, maybe after, after, after night, this is another piece of his work that, that he's, He's, he's been working on as well. So um, ask him to tell you the, the that, that was the minute version, but the, this thing goes deep. Um, Susie, where are you? Come, come on, tell us about this. And then poetry, folks. This this is your piece coming next. And then we'll turn it to Nikki in the war. There you go. So um, Susie, talk talk a little bit about about your work here. Hi everyone, I'm Susie. Um, I know a few of your pieces out there. Um, so I did the, the sketches lined up over there by the doors. Um, uh, let's see, I think there were about seven different residents. Um, originally the idea just came, I was inspired by, um, you probably all know, Humans of New York. Um, just the idea of meeting kind of a random, random person and getting to know their story. Um, I originally intended them to just be kind of something that I would see in the person that I drew would see, and they wouldn't really go from there. Um, just kind of good practice. Um, and then next thing I knew, a friend was telling a friend, and I was getting emailed and like, "Hey, do you want to show your artwork?" And I was like, oh, "Okay." <laughs> um, but I think that's the great thing about art is that it um, is bigger than yourself. Um, you know, I'm not super confident in my ability to be charismatic or like moving or inspirational, but um, my art can stand alone. On itself and people can take away from it what they want to take away from it um, and the experience of getting to know those people and draw them uh, was really really incredible um, 
they were all just so <laughs> incredibly encouraging. I felt like I was like a superstar, and they're like, oh my gosh, you're amazing. I was like, no, I'm not, but thank you. Um, <laughs> and um, just like getting to know, you know, what they are interested in, their hobbies, um, really brought kind of a, a humanity into um, how I see every every person now. Like, oh, that person loves art, that person loves anime, that person loves write, reading, uh, nonfiction, autobiographies, like, you know, things that just normal people love, love to do, for normal people. Um, and so that was really wonderful. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, um, one thing that I've kind of learned uh, being an artist for just a few years is that um, when people uh, take a photograph of someone, it can often be really uncomfortable. You can feel insecure about what you're going to see. But something about having your likeness captured by a pencil um, or a paintbrush is an incredibly like different experience um, because the artist can really put their love for you into the painting rather than just like what the stark whatever you look like that day is um and so i hope that um you guys can see um just how beautiful these people are um i know that they look pretty beautiful to me <laughs> um so yeah thank you everyone. so after poetry uh, check out susie's sketches over here along the Along the wall. Um, so, Monique, it, this is this is you. Um, it, it, as Heather mentioned, there was this uh, slam poetry group that formed. I'll let Monique tell you what slam poetry is, and then I'll let her share their stuff. Uh, so, by saying it's a slam poetry group, that was just uh, something we said because really, uh, it was just an excuse to get a bunch of people together in a room and talk about like anything we wanted to. Uh, and say it was like art and stuff, and, but we did, we wrote a lot and we had a really good time, we told some stories, uh, man, uh, yeah, I want to cry, I feel very uh, touched that 1073 honored us and me and my peers with your, your time and your lives and your love and your passion, and I honestly feel that. Um, doing this poetry group has been one of the most beautiful experiences of my life. I genuinely love the people that I've been able to come in contact with, and I, I call them my friends when I mean it, but more importantly, they're like, they, I feel that they consider me their friends too, and that, that means a lot to me too. Um, so I, I did um, prepare a poem, uh, we uh, also had a, an NPR newscaster come to our poetry group, if you want to check that out. There's a little podcast about it um, from KPLU. But uh, I did present, I'm going to put it on this projector, this very expensive Epson projector. This will be my podium. <laughs> mm. um, yeah, so this, this poem is just inspired by the juxtaposition of taking sociology classes and feeling, frankly, hopeless. Looking at the numbers and being like, oh my god, when, like, is this ever, is, it, is the pain ever going to end for the world? Is it ever going to be just? Are people ever going to have what they deserve? Is the system ever not going to just, like, let people go and throw them away? And what can I do about that? What, what can I honestly do? You know, me, like, I, I don't know. So, I wrote this poem. I asked myself what difference it makes. And to myself I replied, can you quantify the sun after three months of rain? Can you know the benefit of water seeping through drought-cracked soil, inching its way to the roots? I can't tell you what a poem will do, but what it's done for me, expression, art, 
It's given me a voice like nothing else has done before, the link between me and every human soul, the soul that cries out for art like the coyotes cry out to the moon. Like the glint of laughter in a mourning man, we began like fireflies, forming a tentative circle, not sure how close we should get, glowing our lights in a large, covered, a large white covered room. I didn't know. And no one could have told me when I asked to start a poetry group with our friends at Tent City. You see, I want desperately to believe that what we do makes a difference. But I take sociology classes and I know some statistics. This year, one, the one night count told us that at least 3,772 people are sleeping on the bare cold without any shelter at all in Seattle every night over 20% more than last year. And in response, we started a poetry group. Some call it a slam poetry group, but the fact is we don't even know what to call it. Except by the freedom some can feel inside it. What we have to say is tragically overdue, spilling from us, flowing together in our ocean of cacophony. And it is here, peacefully sinking into the waters of our words. Our stories and lives mingled together like seaweed on the ocean floor. This, it is here that I am sure what we do matters. And I am becoming convinced that our small lives, our kind eyes, and maybe a small poetry group between a tent city and a student body are the only things that will change the world. I'm going to uh, open the mic to my friend Jim, who's going to share the poems that he's been working on. Yeah, Jim is more like our veteran, one of our veteran goers. He's come to like every poetry night, and I appreciate so much the consistency. Get this going. Thank you, honey. Wow, that, that poem, that that spoken word about you. so much. What it said about our, our meetings, our workshops, and why I was there every night that I could be. I missed one, and I hate that. Feel cheated. <laughs> Monique is a beautiful soul, you know that. Tender, vulnerable heart, and she shared freely with us. And I love you for that. And I thank you for friendship. <clears throat> and she got me to come up here. That's, that's an amazing thing. <laughs> She's a great motivator. She walked through the campus, half the camp that I could swear would never come. With. So, again, thank you. <clears throat> Father, may my spoken word be approved by you, and if not, let it not be heard, nor remembered to your Son, my Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Poetic expression is the words of healing within, welling. Telling, I will fill you with good things till you should burst good things from me and living waters till you should burst. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord, yes, let it be as you will. Fill me to the brim and beyond with good things from you and your living waters. Yes, Lord, yes. My word I will write on your heart and pour streams upon you. Thy will be done. Thank you, Father, Son, and Holy One. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And the word hovered over the deep. On the day when God had finished all that he intended and before he would rest, 
God smiled. The word hovered over the deep still, and it was good. <clears throat> All creation, from the great to the small, everything that was, turned to see God's face, that he was pleased, very pleased, with one voice, all creation, with God spoke. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha. The word was God. And the word drew breath, and the breeze began, and forever is became now. You sent the prophets, preachers, teachers, priests, and poets, holy men and women. You cried out in nature from the clouds and mountains, fields and flowers. The sea swelled with you. You sent your beloved homeless men and women that we should see and hear, but we did not, no, not. The word became flesh and dwelt in our midst. Your son, your only son. But we did not see, we did not hear, and still would not believe. We fixed him to the cross until there was no breath. But you raised him up from that tomb that we should live forever with him in you by the power of your Holy Spirit in the promise of your word. For God so loved the world. I don't give up on his father. I know you won't. But to as many as did believe in him, he gave the right to become his sons and daughters. Christ Jesus commended his spirit to God the Father on that cross as he breathed his last. I believe it was accepted. And when we accept Christ into our hearts, when we are crucified with him, it is no longer I, me, we, but Christ who lives in us, his spirit received. Of what shall we then be afraid? Thank you. Amen. Hi, welcome. Uh, and thank you. Thank you. Does anyone want to make sure that they get to say their piece before we start to close this? time of formal talking and continue our conversation. Anyone? I want to make yes. Come on. Thank you, Jessica. Yeah, great. Okay. Hi. Hi, my name is Jessica. Um, I'm not really a public speaker, but um, I talked to Nikki earlier this week and um, just thought that it would be a good idea to share. Um, okay, so I'm a transfer student, and um, so as a transfer student, it was really hard to like find a community here. And um, so I, over the summer, I went to go study abroad, and then when I came back, I realized that there was a whole new community here, and, and um, it was such a blessing because it really showed me that SPU does have a community, and it does like welcome like so many people just into it and like with such open arms and it like it just it not only changed my perspective about like um in different communities but it just changed my perspective of SVU altogether um so I took a tour and I had a private tour with Lily and um <laughs> and she showed me um I mean all your tents and it was just absolutely wonderful how you guys had like a kitchen and a library and I was honestly so impressed and then, um, but when she showed me the library, she brought up the fact that you guys didn't have any um, Bibles in your library. 
and then we talked about how it's just nice to have them around and um, later that day I was so blessed to be able to buy Lily a, a Bible from the bookstore but I wanted to do more and to provide Bibles for everyone um, and so we tried to get a couple donations of, um, of Bibles and we got a couple so we have 20 Bibles here if you guys want to take any home with you or um, and a couple are going to the library. I mean, all of them are going to the library. They're all for you guys. Um, and if you guys, like if there's not enough, then we can always get more as well. So just wanted to share that and say thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Um, I think we're all starting to feel a little choked up here. Um, and. I know that it has been a two-way relationship, right? We have learned from you, you have learned from us, you have made art, we've made art, poetry, um, you've attended classes, spoken in classes, Sue's have written papers about you, you know, all kinds of learning happened and we are really grateful for that. And so um, it's, you know, kind of like with mixed emotions that we're here tonight kind of celebrating our three months and then on saturday we all promise to show up and help move that stuff but already so much work has been done um in, in within the camp so um i'm just really grateful that sp once again um you know had walls that were permeable that said you all come in and I have to say every time I saw you in the student union or you know Tom sitting with his paper and his uh, coffee in here it's just nice to see people of different ages hanging out at computer stations and you made um, our campus a, a more alive place by being here so again we are grateful and I think what I would love to do is to have Jeff Jordan our vice president for student life to come on up and give us a blessing and a benediction and a word of you know fair fair you I promise not to preach. Would you pray with me? God, you've been most gracious in ways that we have not expected. You have opened hearts, you have broken down walls, we have listened, we have heard, we have seen your face in one another, and we are thankful. Do not let our hearts get hardened. God, there are many ways for us to continue this work, whether that be with legislation, whether that be with gift, gifts of food, whether that be with beauty and paintings and poetry, whether it be in just conversations. <coughs> we thank you for the gifts that so many have already brought to this um, event tonight, but also through the last three months. And we ask that your blessing continue to be with the residents of Tent City 3 and with the folks at SPU as well, not just the students, but also the faculty and the staff and the administration. May we not stop here. May we continue to go, whatever that may mean, and that you would continue to bless, that you continue to strengthen. May we listen well to the words of one another, and in particular to your words. We pray all this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, so here's what we'll do now. This ends our formal program, but there are snacks over there, and you're here, so let's hang out. It'd be great to, to you know, it, it feels like sort of like the Lord of the Rings, right? Like it ends and then it doesn't end because there's still more of it. But yeah, I mean, whatever, whatever. Um, we're gonna we're gonna hang out and talk. There's snacks, um, but yeah. So 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 spend some time together. And as Nikki pointed out, we'll see you Saturday morning for the move, right? Thanks, friends. Have a good night.